‫שאין דבר מסרת ברוכת, ‫כי כמו עושה את הפעמים עצמאים רב, ‫עומר רבי לוזור, עומר רבי חנינו, ‫תלמיד החכמים, ‫מה רבי משם באלה? ‫תלמיד החכמים, ‫those who learn Torah from חכמים, ‫they increase peace in the world. ‫שני אמר וחבוני יחלמו דשם, ‫ורב שלום בנוך. ‫אז תקראו בו נוריך לבוא נוריך, ‫כי זה Jewish people, ‫those who learn Torah, ‫תלמיד החכמים, ‫they build up the world. ‫שולם רוב לאיה וסיר עושה חוב, ‫אין לא ממיכשל. ‫אז first of all, there's peace to those ‫who love Torah and they don't have any מיכשל. ‫זה לא כמו מיכשל. ‫-they don't fall down, whatever. ‫היא שולם בחילו עכשיו ובארמוני סויך. ‫אז through learning Torah, ‫also they increase the peace ‫בארמוני סויך, ‫refers to the bottom כנסייה ‫בוט אני לא שוב. למען החי וראי אדם רנו שולם בוך, and not only that, they also increase peace by their brothers and friends who don't learn Torah as much as they do, but because they learn Torah, they increase the peace so much that everybody will get some of it. למען בייס השם אלי כן אהבה כשותיו לוך, so through learning Torah, they also, they essentially, they, they are asking a Kodesh Baruch Hu and they are causing for a Kodesh Baruch Hu to eventually bring, uh, bring down Bisa Mikdash, to build up the Bisa Mikdash. Hashem is la'am yitin, ava yivorech esam li vasholem, that also Kodesh Baruch Hu will bring the Meshgiul ha'amitiz vashlim, and we call it me mamesh through learning Torah. So we see how the Torah that the Talmud HaChachom will learn increases Sholem and peace everywhere in the world. Now there is a, there is a Min Negis Rol that the Rebbe always mentions to connect the end of the Masechta and the beginning of the Masechta. So we see the end of the Masechta speaks about the peace, increasing peace, and Sholem till Atke Dikach that the Kodesh Baruch will bring Mashiach Tzitkenu Bukov and Mamesh. The beginning of the Masechta speaks about Kiyashma, speaks about you have to say Shema twice a day. Uh, well, the first mission speaks about what's the time. What's the, first, what's the beginning of the time? What's the first time moment you could say Shema at night? And what's the Quran Shema Ba'avin? And then the Gemara asks a very interesting question. First of all, you're asking from where? How do you know you should say Bichla in the first place? That's number one. Number two, Why are you starting with Shema of the night? You should have started with the morning. Shema of the morning. So the Gemara gives two answers. Number one, The, t- the Tana was referring to the Pasuk. The Pasuk says, So you have to say Shema twice. And the first one is Bishok Bechov. That's why also the Tana starts with the night, because that was the first Shema that the Torah was referring to. Yeah, and then, then the Gemara gives another answer. The Tana was learning it from the creation of the world. That it says, Over there it's also, it starts with the evening. But then the second answer, it doesn't answer the first question. Where is the Tani, what, what is the Tani referring to that he asks me Mosa? It sounds like the second answer of the Gemara only answers the second question, not the first question. And Pashto Stake does the Pshat of the Gemara, and Rashi Take says this. But now maybe Yishleima, if you connect the Seif and the Reisha, you could answer that no, that's why the Gemara, there's a reason, the Gemara answer, actually answers both questions. And the Hekdem, you should ask a different question. The Masechet is called Broches. Why are you standing with Shema? You should mention Shema later. Or start with a different broche. Why are you starting with Shema if the whole Masechta is broches? So the Tanya says, and Tanya, the Alter Rebbe explains that the broch, Birkas, Krishma are a preparation for Shema. Meaning that the whole point of the broches of Krishna is for the preparation of Shema. What is Shema? What are we saying Shema? Shema Yisrael Hashem Elekeinu Hashem Echod. And the Alter Rebbe says that if you were not mechaven properly the Kavon of Shema, meaning that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the only master and lord in this world, you are not yet to Shema. Especially according to all the explanation, Nechsidas, you have a special Pshat and Shema, meaning that the entire being of the world is HaKadosh Baruch. And that's the connection between the Seif and the Reish. And that's why the whole Masech, the Baruch, starts with Shema. Because the whole point of the Torah we just said to increase Shalom Barilom and meaning to bring down to Megala HaKadosh Baruch in this world. Meaning to show that the entire being of this world is HaKadosh Baruch. And that is the purpose of Shema also. And he says Shema, he basically what he is saying He's saying the entire being of this entire world is a Kodesh Baruch. And this is the Shlema, the connection between the Reish and the Seif. And that's also the answer of the Gemara. The point of Erev and Boikir, that will be this Galus Yoim Echod, that a Kodesh Baruch is Echod and Yuchod in this world. And therefore, and therefore the Mishnah starts with the Mosa Kerem and Shema Be'arvin. And that's why also it's Tava Arvin Da. אנחנו לא חברים,
So he says the microphone is already here, so there's no need to. Uh, is this already? Okay, good. So we're holding in the middle of Perik Zayn. We're to, Perik Zayn. We were speaking about the respect one has to give based on Mikdash. Various um, actions, various um, that one is allowed, one doesn't is not allowed, and about when and what from which from each point a person is not allowed to act frivolously. So we said the first point we, from, uh, from which a person has to already consider the fact that he's standing in front of Eitz HaMikdash was Har the viewing mountain, because this was the first point from which the Oil Regalim, everybody who came from north of Eretz Yisrael, which most of Yidin did live in north of Eretz Yisrael, they came down towards Yerushalayim, that was the first point where they were able to see Beis HaMikdash. Okay, so we are holding Seif Halacha uh, Tes. Tes. A person is not allowed to uh, clear his bowels or to uh, huh? sleep. Sleep. or sleep between between east and west, meaning facing east or west. And it's especially a person not only is not allowed to do it one time, a person is not allowed to actually build a, a, a restroom um, between uh, east and west, in other words, facing either east or west, because the Beis HaMikdosh, the Heichol, was in the west. So a person is only allowed to do this between south and north. But if what happens if you are inside the after after Harat we said that that mountain where you cannot act frivolously already. So what? I'm only a human being. What should I do then? He's not allowed to face this amigdash. Yeah, yeah. So so by the way, the Alter Rebbe brings it mentions this also in Shulchan Oh, This halacha also applies, and um, but the Alter Rebbe says it's only if you are in an open area open space it was very normal thing in those days that bathrooms were just open area in a field mm -hmm. right so in such a case you're not allowed to face south uh, east or west 
you have to face north or south. Bad al Rebbe says, if you have a wall, or a house, or a chatkale, whatever that is, these rules do not apply because you have a mechitza, because it separates you, and therefore, yeah. And by the way, there's also a machlekes uh, about if this refers only to um, only to those who live east or, uh, south, uh, east or western to Beis Hamikdash. For example, we, for us, Beis Hamikdash is more south than east or west. How about those who live in no, Russia? Right. Over there is for sure south. That's why Yidden in Russia doesn't south. But the Adiram lived in Egypt first before that in Spain. So. It was always east and west, right? That was the that was the, the situation. But it sounds from the Rambam like the main thing, just west has its own special idea of being west and east, because look what he says at the end. Um, um, he says, He says, um, The one is not allowed to face Beis Amikdash, meaning that because he's facing Beis Amikdash, which is the Mayrev, and it says the Mayrev is the Heichol, meaning the Mayrev has its own importance of being the place where the Heichol is. It's an idea, yeah. Again, it's a not it's a bit different. One is not allowed. What? Yeah, it's not just the one that has to be in the same thing with sleeping. Yep, yep. One is not allowed to make um, a house in the same in the same in the same um, form um, size of the heichol. What? Good question. Um, I guess it depends on whose name it's written. Okay. And the same thing, means like the porch. It's like the ulam, and its front yard, like the size of the azoro. Same thing, the table, like the table in, in the in the Kodesh. And same thing, also the menera. One is not allowed to build the menera for his own use. Again, it's only for his own use. Similar to what the way it was in Beis Hamikdash, and it's very interesting that you could notice it doesn't say here, for example, you're not allowed to make uh, I don't know your house like the Azor. Why? It's simple, because again, we're talking about you're not allowed to make for your own personal use similar constructions like it was made for Hakadosh Baruch Hu, right? So we made that the Heichol is a house, the Ulam is a even though technically it was covered like a house. But again, the point of the Ulam was to be like a Achsadro, like an open porch in the front. So you can make your house like you alone, but you cannot make your porch like you alone, because then you are completely copying the way it was in Beis Hamikdash. It's disrespect to Beis Hamikdash. Again, disrespect to Hakadosh Baruch Hu who dwells in Beis Hamikdash. Yep. But Avol Oise Menayro Shel Chamish Okonim Oy Shel Shmoyin Okonim Oy Menayro Shein Shel Mateches Avol Pishi Yesh Lo Shiv Okonim. So one is allowed to make a Menayro that has five um, what, what, branches, or eight, like what we have in Hanukkah, or a manera, a manera that is not made out of metal, bichla. let's say a wooden one. So as long as you do not copy the the the, 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 the equipment, the, the utensils of Beisam Mikdosh, according to the halacha of Beisam Mikdosh, meaning a manera in Beisam Mikdosh had two rules. It had to be made out of metal, and it had to be made in a way that it has seven branches. It says the, the, it, it wasn't always made out of gold. The Maccabeam actually used um, Greek, um, what are they called, uh, spears. Yeah. yeah, that was the first man, that was the first manera. They used Greek spears to build the first base, to build the first manera. Obviously, the Greeks didn't leave anything of the golden manera that was there before. So they didn't really have a choice. And the Maccabeam at first were very, very poor. They had to use whatever they had. So they actually made it out of metal of uh, Greek uh, spears. Push the spears into it. Yeah, that's what it was. So what do we see from here? It doesn't have to be gold. So what does it need? What does it, need? it needs to be out of metal. It needs to have seven branches. You cannot do it in your own house. You can make it eight branches, five branches, or make it out of wood. Miniature or like a scale that you do? Uh, probably not. Also not. Yeah. Right. Let's move on. So what do we, again, all these rules, all these laws, the, their point is to show the respect to Beis Amikdash. And again, like the Rabbim says, you don't respect the place. You respect the, the, to whom the place belongs to. You respect the Kodesh Baruch Hu. You cannot compare yourself to a Kodesh Baruch Hu and now a Kodesh Baruch has a menayra like this, I will also have a menayra like this. It's a special disrespect. You're not, allowed to, you're not allowed to do it. And what happens if you do it? So we said in the beginning, it's either a mitzvah to say, you must have fear, respect, true respect to Beis Hamikdash. Do Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Yep. 
שלוש מחנו יסו ישראל במדבר. When Yidin were in, in, in the desert, they were split into three camps, three separate areas. Machne Yisroel, the Arba Machnois, the, 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 the camp of Yidin, of the, gen, of the general population, and which was split into four, right, because there were three tribes on each side. Umachne Levio, the camp of the Levine, which was surrounding the Mishkon. Shenemal, bovesovim la Mishkon yachanu, even though, even though we all know that the families of the Levim also kind of split each family around a different, a different side of the, of the Mishkan. But what do we see from here, from the Posuk? That's why the Rambam brings here the Posuk. Why is it bringing the Posuk? Because it shows us that unlike the Yidin, the general Yidin, who were directed to be separated per, uh, per side, Per, per side of the air, uh, east, uh, east uh, what's it called? West, east, uh, south, yeah. north. They were split intentionally. The Levim, actually, when the Torah speaks about their camp, encampment, the Pasuk just says, so Mishkon yachanu. They will just be encamped around the Mishkon. The Levim didn't have a specific area to encamp. Wherever they were, it's considered like one big camp. Split or not split, doesn't matter. It's considered one camp. And the camp of the Kodesh Baruch Hu the third group, the third encampment, that was the area from the entrance of Oil Maid inwards. In other words, where the Mishkan was. Because let's remember, in time of the Mishkan, there was no Ezaz Noshi. You only had the Azara, and you had the Mishkan itself, the building, the construction inside. That's it. So from the Chatzar Oil Maid, from the entrance of the Mishkan, inward, that was considered Machne Shechino, the encampment of the Shechino. No one was there before. What? No well, the Kayanim were only allowed to enter there during a Veda. Yes. It says the, the Kayanim were encamped right outside the Mishkan. Like together with the Levine, but right outside, closer. So the but, kept empty. What? What you say was kept empty. Was well, it wasn't kept empty. It was there empty when there was no Aveda. Right. There was Aveda, the Kayanim were there. Right. Yeah. We'll connect on the Deiris. And we're using the same concept. For the generations forward, from the entrance, the gates of Yerushalayim, until the Temple Mount was considered Machnisro. That was considered like the, the encampment of the general population, Jewish population. And from the entrance of the uh, of the Temple Mount, Harabais, we remember there were many of them until the entrance of the Azor, the whole area, the whole Temple Mount. Shuhusha Nikone, which was called the gates of Nikone, they were the main gates leading up from the eastern gate to the Azorah, was called Shah Nikone, the gates of Nikone, Kemach Nelevi, there was the encampment of the Levi, has the, again, not the Pshad the Levi were living there, it means he has the same Gedder, Chshivas, and we'll see later the Nafkimin and Lahaloche, why, what's so important about it. Umi Pesach Azorah Belifnim, Machanishchina, from the entrance of the Azorah inwards, meaning the entire Azorah. The Ulov, the Heichol, that's considered Machne Shechino. The Achel, Vezras Noshim. Now, what about the Chel, which we know the small fence, and the Vezras Noshim, which was the additional, um, um, the additional area in front of the Azara? What is that exactly? So it says Ma'ale Yisrael Levi Seilon. It has a special um, uh, the, the description, a special rules for themselves for Beis Hamikdash. Something like this did not exist here in Mishkan. That's an addition. That's an that's an additional. A piece of Beis Hamikdash, which they added later on. Call is called Eretz Yisrael. Now, okay, now that we know that the Mishkan and the Harabais had very special categories, but we also know that Eretz Yisrael is also holy, right? And what are you telling me? The Yerushalayim is only the land of the general population of the Yidden. What about the rest of the Eretz Yisrael? Why aren't you saying that the, that the rest is also the general, the area of Machan Yisrael, right? So what exactly? And even if it's not, what exactly the definition? The, the, the lawful definition of the area of Eretz Yisrael. So let's see. Kol Eretz Yisrael mekudesh mikol arotz. The entire land of Israel has a special category for itself in comparison with the other lands. Umayek dushosa. And where do we see its significance of holiness? Shemevi mimeno ho'oimer ushte'alechem ve'abikurim. That you can bring from Eretz Yisrael the oimer, right? Only from there, the korbonus of the oimer, the shte'alechem and shvuas, and bikurim and also bikurim. Something that other lands do not have the right. You cannot bring such components from Paris or from Ukraine, even though there's a very good crop of wheat over there. No, the wheat has to come from Eretz Yisrael. Why? Because it's what? No, also not. 
there's no Tumim Maisos. Okay, good, the Seder, but but what Tumim Maisos? Why doesn't it say Tumim Maisos? A child, right? Good. What about Avi Yarden? What? Avi Yarden. Who? Avi Yarden. Avi Yarden is technically also a Israel, right? Well, uh, originally, yes, it is. Uh, the place where it was split, given to Chetz Shem Nashe. Yeah. yeah. Sure it is. Okay. Yeah, it's a, actually, it says that there was a time there, but sometimes they have to bring from Avi Yarden as well. It was Yehuda and Zolin and Avi Yarden. Yeah. Now, within Eretz Yisrael itself, there are ten levels of Gdusha. So let's start. The first one, Ayores HaMukofes, is like the special level of Gdusha, is Ayores HaMukofes, Chayimah Mikudoshes Mishar Oretz. Those cities, they were surrounded by walls from the times of Yeshua ben Nun. They have a special holiness in comparison with the rest of Eretz Yisrael. What was what so special about them? That first of all, you have to, a person who has a, tzras, who has a leper cannot live in a city like that. It has a special significance. And one is not allowed to bury a dead person inside, a dead body inside, unless of the Rambam, everybody will agree. Everybody will no, everybody will agree, or the Shiva Stevair, the people who represent the city, it's a musik that there are seven, the best people of the city. Usually we're talking about the Rov, the Dain, whatever special people in the city, if they all agree because they represent all the Kohov, so they have the right to speak on behalf of everyone. Look in the Raivid, it's very interesting. Raivid, do you have the Raivid there? Look the Raivid. I never heard about such a thing that the people, if they want, they can bury there. You cannot bury there, period. So it says, you are allowed to move them around the city. Until the until until, until for if you have a good reason to do it, what? Move the body around the city. No, 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 no. In the city itself. In the city itself. So, for example, the example he gives over here is, for example, if 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 the relatives cannot bury him, right? They cannot bury him. They don't have the money or whatever that is. So you are allowed to move him from one place to another, transfer him within the city, but you're not allowed to bury him. Meaning a permanent place, that not. But if a, a non-permanent uh, place, that's okay. That's what? What do you mean impossible? Well, who was going to pay for it? That's the question. Yeah, Vaita. The im yotza meitz chusloi. Now, what happens if, according to the Rambam, you could do it? So let's say the Chavar Kadisha made a mistake. They took the body out. And all of a sudden, everybody's screaming, Yo, what are you talking about? The Shiva Teva, you told me I can do it. I can bury him in the city. What are you saying? Why did you take him out? Once the body is out, it's considered like it's outside the city. It's not considered already like it's separate entity from the city. And everybody and nobody has the right. Even the whole city doesn't have the right to bring back the body. That's part of the holiness of a city like that in Eretz Okay. Yeah. Yericho, yeah, Yerushalayim. Okay, no, Yerushalayim. We'll see soon. Chevrei, Rotzub Noir Lohitzi. So we'll see soon. We'll see soon. Yerushalayim is a very special category. Yeah, let's move on. Rabbi said, let's move on. Rotzub Noir Lohitzi Akevam in Amidino. Now, it's such a city. Let's say after 50 years, it decided that okay, you know what? We we don't want this body here anymore. So the Allah is mefani noisy. Even though generally taking out the grave is something that is frowned upon, everybody knows this. But in a city like that, because of the holiness of the of the city, and the only reason why the body was there is because everybody agreed. Now that everybody agrees, should move out again because of the holiness of the city. The body could be moved down. Mm-hmm. And you can move all types of graves outside of the town. Chutz besides for Mikever Novi or Melech. If let's say you had a king, not even one of the kings of David Amalek, one of the descendants of David Amalek, his dynasty. He could even be Melech Yerovam. 
let's say, or a different king. If you know he's buried there, if you know he's buried there, you are not allowed to take him out. Yeah. Or a novi. Now, what if, what if, like we know, cities today expand exponentially. Now, what happens if first they buried him outside, and all of a sudden we find out that surrounded from all sides? Yeah, a, bury, a, a grave that was surrounded by the city. Either from both sides, from, from four, all four sides, or only from two sides. For example, let's say it's a city that is, that is between two between a river. So you have on one side you have a city and then you have on the other side. So you so you can't surround the grave from both from all four sides because the other side it's a it's a lake, it's a river, you can't do anything. But it is surrounded from two sides. So what's the Allah? Yeah. So im if there is a, a distance of fifty ames from the city from each side of the grave. You cannot remove the grave unless everybody agrees to remove it because it's outside of the area. So even though it's technically swallowed, so to speak, by the city, but because didn't not everybody agreed, don't move the grave because it's still far away from the city. It's fifty amas considered far away. There's a whole Gemara in Sufis about it. But if it's less than fifty amas, technically, 50, less than fifty amas considered within the town itself. So mifani no say. You can remove the grave, even if not everybody agreed to remove it, because of the holiness of the city. No, no, because of the dusha of the city. No, 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 no. That's why you find that the birds that have to be fifty amas from the edge of the city of the prophet. I know what you're saying, but no, but there's a different gemara in Exodus two that mentions about fifty amas about if it's considered far away from the city. Hamishimam is considered far away from the city. Yeah, it's considered not part of the city. If it's within 50 hours, it's considered a part of the city. So even not if even if not everybody agreed to remove it, this grave cannot be in the city. It's a city that's surrounded by a wall since the days of Yeshua Benon. It is a special Gedusha because it's a special city within Eretz Yisrael. Now, that was a city that was surrounded by a wall since the days of Yeshua Benon. Yerushalayim Kodesh Asmishara Yoros in the Prophets. Yerushalayim has a special significance, special Gedusha, sanctification over the other cities that are also surrounded by walls. What's so special about Yerushalayim? That only in Yerushalayim you can eat everywhere Kodshim Kalim and Maiser Shein. You cannot eat your Kodshim Kalim, let's say in Hebrew. You can't do it. You must go to Yerushalayim. That's the only place where you can eat Kodshim Kalim. Like Shlomo, for example. Nechonim Becholayim. Said every morning. Nechonim Becholayim. You can only do what's what's kolayir on Yerushalayim. You can eat. You don't have to eat the shlamim davkin beis hamikdash. You can eat it all over Yerushalayim. Pesach, right? Maisa. Ve'elu dvarim shamu biYerushalayim. Shenemu biYerushalayim. And the following is something extra that was told about Yerushalayim. So we remember what we just said about a city that not Yerushalayim. That was surrounded by a wall. That in case that in case that you cannot bury it, but according to the Ravid, you can't bury him. Um, but you could still move him around. Or according to the Ram, you could bury him. But Yerushalayim is different. Ain melinim bo ames. You cannot leave a dead body in Yerushalayim overnight. Period. Ve'en ma'avirim b'seicho atzmi sodom. And not only that, let's say you want to bring you want to bring some a, a body from let's say from Tveria to Hebron, and you decided if you're going to go through Yerushalayim, it's going to be faster because the, the road in Yerushalayim are built better, whatever the reason is. You are not allowed to do this. You have to go around the city. You can't bring any dead body into Yerushalayim from the outside. The Balabatim in Yerushalayim are not allowed to rent out their houses. Rather, they have to let people in for free. Because obviously, it would have been a huge enterprise. Imagine you have to come to Yerushalayim. You must come to Yerushalayim. And I'm telling you, okay, you must come to Yerushalayim. You don't really have a choice in the matter. No, Pay me $5,000 a night. You don't really have a choice. No, Everybody will make a buck about on it. So therefore, in Yerushalayim, you are not allowed to rent out your houses for you, payment at all. Yes. No Airbnb. No. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Then nice mokim toishop. You are not allowed to give a place over there for bichlal, not only to rent. You're not allowed to let a ger toishov in. A ger toishov is a goy that is mekabel on himself not to din avedazore, mekabel himself to do sheva mitzvahs in the noyach. 
What? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and you're not allowed to let them, you're not allowed to let them in Bikhlad. Women, you are allowed to. Vaita. Yeah, and Now it's what you mentioned before. The Ark Vorm in Yerushalayim. Kivir Bis David. What are you talking about? In Yerushalayim itself, you have the burial. The burial of the kings of David. All of them. What are you saying? Dr. Ein Mekayim Bakvaris. Chutz mi Kivir Bis David Kever Chuldo. Why? Because Shohoyubam in Mois Nedim Arishayim. They were there since forever. What? You said it before anyone. The what? No, he said, no, you're not. He said, it says, it says like this If there was a kever of Novi that was after Yeminivi Marishon, in other words, after the Bissam English was built, right? Yeah. Yeah. And or a king of, of a king uh, in role later on, even they cannot stay in Yerushalayim. But yeah. Kivre Beis David and Chuldon Avi, only Chuldon Avi. A woman, FYI, their burial is allowed to remain there. Why? Because because they were always there before everything. So you cannot remove them. They were there before you. Okay. Oh, Kiva, Kiva Sanhedrin. No, there's one there. Now? Huh? Arazesim. Arazesim is not part of Yerushalayim. It's a mountain outside of Yerushalayim. Right. That's why it was. That's why it's uh, it's, right. a, it's a burial. It's not. Okay. Yeah, it's not a part it's of not, Yerushalayim. It's not yeah, I, I thought you would ask something else. The, 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 there is a whole neighborhood in Yerushalayim called Sanhedria, right. and yeah. the reason why it's called it's Sanhedria, Sanhedria is yeah. because you have the burials of the Sanhedrin is right there. Yeah, the yeah. And the answer is yeah. that's not part of Yerushalayim. <laughs> also not. There's a very limited area that's called yeah. considered the Yerushalayim of the Chaimus of the of the, the old city. The old city. The old city. Where, in other words, surrounded by the wall from the days of Yishuvenu. Now, again, it's not that simple. Um, again, what a city could expand, and uh, there is various rules about how you what's considered a city a city expansion, etc. But this is not the place, and honestly, I don't know all the details. Let's move on. Huh? What? That's what they meant. Uh, to expand the city of Yerushalayim. Yeah. Right. And you are not allowed to plant in the city of Yerushalayim um, orchards and gardens. Now, how do you plant an orchard? How do you plant a garden? How do you plow? How do you, in other words, for you to for it to work, what do you need to do? You need to bring a lot of uh, fertilizer. Fertilizer, as a rule, smells. Yerushalayim, you're trying to keep it down. So we are not bringing, we're not doing this stuff to keep Yerushalayim clean and neat because, again, of its holiness. You're not allowed to, to grow there any kind of trees besides for rose trees, rose bushes. That again, that was the custom. It was there already since the days of the first Nevim. You're not allowed to make heap of uh, garbage over there because of the various Shrotzim they'll be running around. Why is that a problem? Because of Tume. Yerushalayim is the place where everybody is trying to keep themselves tired. You're going to bring this stuff in? Keep all your garbage outside of town. town. That's where that's where it should be. You're not the houses in Yerushalayim are not allowed to have stick is wood pieces of wood or whatever that is sticking out of the house. Why? Because it could be a, a, a what's it called a bird that would bring a dead animal and put it on top. So everything that goes beneath it, or like an animal, a piece of a dead body, you put it on top, and a person might go under, wouldn't know, and it'll become Tom as well. So therefore, nothing should be sticking out. Everything has to be straight. Everybody has to have no kunzna. That's it. Okay. One is not allowed to make big fire over there. Big, uh, uh, furnace. furnace. One is not allowed to make big furnaces in Yerushalayim because of the smoke. 
and there's a lot of smoke, it will disturb it, people. You're not allowed to do it. The one is not allowed to grow, to raise uh, chicken over there because of the kochim. Again, because it's, it's known that, that uh, the chicken are very dirty type of bird. They go around, they collect all the garbage around. Same thing. They could they could collect the sherets and then they're, yeah. The chain le gad lo akenim tan goyim bechol eretz yisrael. It's not always. And for this reason, koyim are not allowed to raise chicken anywhere in eretz yisrael. For this reason, because chicken is a dirty bird, collects sherets from everywhere. A koyim is, but generally, especially in those days, as a rule, is a place where you have a lot of trume, you have a lot of kochim laying around. So therefore, one cannot go with the other. It's not good. Right? The ein abayis nechnot bo. One, uh, the, the, the house over there, and if you sell a house, if you sell a house to your friend in Yerushalayim, even when it's even when it's, mm-hmm. it's surrounded by a wall, the house is never really sold. So it's, there is a rule when it comes to uh, selling a house, uh, real estate in a city that's surrounded by a wall. It's by definition, it's a high, it's a very important type of real estate, right? Especially in those days. A wall was a protective uh, measure, especially also it's a special city, uh, like we said before. So there is, but there is a rule. If one sells a house in a city like that, not in Yerushalayim, in a city like that, so the the original seller can always come back, give back the money, pay up what he paid, and get the house back. Meaning, but that's only for the first twelve months. After twelve months, consider lechlot. That's it. If there is a new owner to the real estate in Yerushalayim, it doesn't exist. In Yerushalayim, the original owner will always be the original owner mm-hmm. as long as he can afford to get back the house. That's it. At, at, at the price that he, uh, not the current value. No, okay, whatever, yeah. No. Well, mm-hmm. The whole thing about market value is a completely different uh, idea, whatever. It's, it's a very like lofty, uh, hypothetical idea, right? And again, a house in Yerushalayim that became Gata Nega does not become Tome. And Yerushalayim cannot be Ranidachas. And you cannot bring also Egla Rufa. It does not bring Egla Rufa. Why? Because it says that the Zkenim, the Zkenim of that of, of those people, and because of there, the Yerushalayim was never really given out to anyone. There is not a particular person who has to bring it. Who is going to bring it? Who is taking responsibility? This show, that show, who is going to do it? What? Like house has, uh, had a oh, talking about the negoim. So Yerushalayim does not in Yerushalayim a house does not become nega, even though it has an even if it has an egg, yeah. it doesn't become tom. And uh, and uh, egla rufa one, it doesn't have to bring egla rufa. Why? Because egla rufa can only be only come from a place where that is owned right. from real ownership. But over here Yerushalayim was never in nischalik to anyone. Was never really given out to a spe- specific person because it was never really given to any. A specific tribe, so essentially it's like very uh, in the Lufta line. So therefore, there is no Agla Ruf over there, over here. It does not apply. Okay, um, we should stop here. Or should we continue? Okay, what? Yeah. 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 Ye